Hello, and welcome to this week's episode. I'd like to introduce to you my friend Gustavo Siever. I'm excited to have him on to this week's episode because he has traveled around the world. He's done, he has lived like me in different parts that at a certain point you wonder, well, where is home? And we spoke about something which is about following your heart. I wonder if you've ever had that moment in life where you are caught between other people's advice because you got to make a decision. On one hand, you want to make your own decision, but on the other hand, you are living in this uncertainty, so you end up asking different people for advices. So sitting down with Gustavo, it was nice to hear his perspective on how he made some decisions, especially when he was moving from country to country. I look forward to sharing this conversation with you. And if you haven't followed or subscribed, it'd be really nice for you to do so. Now, one, you get notified. And second of all, it also helps grow the podcast to reach other communities who may be interested in a subject like this. Enjoy this week's episode. So my question is, what would you like, if you had to share a story with somebody, what would you like to, what would story would you like to share with others that you always think I want to share this story? Well, I mean, I think my, my living abroad and, and my, my, my own job has, it, it's a story itself, you know, being able to, to, to adapt and, and, and live in different parts of the world, I think, or in, or in South America and the Caribbean. For me, it's, it's, it's something that I feel very proud of. And, and, and I think it's, um, wherever I've gone, I, you know, I left a trail blazer kind of thing. I have, I, I left a mark. But have, so you said you're a trailblazer. What does that mean? We'll start on this note. What does that mean for you? Well, um, no, no fear, and uh, you leave a mark wherever you go. So, what mark have you left in the countries you've lived in, and how many countries uh, have you lived in? Because you've lived in quite a bit. Four back to back to my roots. Five. Did the roots are? Well, Venezuela. I was born in Venezuela, and uh, and my dad was from Spain. So, but but I lived in the U.S. here in Curacao, Bolivia, Chile, briefly, and now back to Caracas. Is that full circle? I don't think so. It's a stopover. Okay, so trailblaze. Okay. Trailblazed in Corsa. What legacy did you leave behind? Oh, family, friends, um, community, language, culture. Oh, so much. Do you consider Corsa more home than Venezuela? <laughs> That's a difficult one. Um, it, it, Curacao is home for my adult adulthood because i i yes i mean during the i i was i came here uh, when i was 20 24 20 something like that really 26 uh -huh. i don't remember quite well but i came here 20 in 2001 when margie hired me and i stayed for 16 uh, 15 years so Basically, we're talking about all my all my thirties were here, and part of my forties. So, I had no idea. Yes, it was a long time. And till your twenties, you were in Venezuela. No, before before between Venezuela and Curacao, I lived three years in the U.S. Where um, in North Carolina. Where I, I, that's where I did that. I worked in, in the public school system as a teacher and I did my master's degree while I was there. 
So that was 1998, 2001. And now you are the superintendent of international school in Venezuela. Correct. Did you ever, with all that you've done in your career, did you ever expect that to be your career path? Never in my life. I, I, never, I never thought that I was going to, I never imagined leaving or returning to Venezuela after 23 years that I, that I left. Um, but life happens, you know, in a, in a funny way, in a weird way, in a positive way. I was back then in Chile mm -hmm. and, uh, I moved from Bolivia to Chile, um, in 2021, thinking that, um, well, Chile is a wonderful country. is a It's a rich country in, in South America. Um, an opportunity, a job opportunity, came up that I thought it was interesting to me at that point of my career. Um, and and when I got to uh, Santiago, I realized that the job it wasn't what they projected to me, what they offered me. The reality was different, but I. I, I stood up my grounds and I continued working and I was trying to make the best out of it. Mm -hmm. um, while I was in Santiago, um, um, a former superintendent from Colegio Internacional de Caracas called me and she, she contacted me. She sent me a message and then we had a conversation. And basically she asked me that the... My current school was looking for a superintendent and that if I could help them in the search of, of the, the right candidate. Yeah. Um, kind of a, as a consultant. Okay. And I said, yes, for sure. I knew the school. I know the country. I know the, the, the challenges and, and the good and the bad. So. I interviewed with them, with, with the board, and they told me that they described more or less, you know, the situation of, of the country, the school, and also the type of candidate that that they were looking for. And uh, immediately different people came to my mind. I, I posted an ad on, on LinkedIn, uh, and I got even, you know, more people interested in the position, even though, you know, it... Mm -hmm. it it's a it's a challenging post. It was, but it was after COVID, so a lot of people were looking for a job or lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. So I started interviewing people that I thought were, you know, right candidates for uh, the school in Caracas, and I will send them to to the school board. I said, listen, these are these are the candidates that I find could be a good match. Mm -hmm. And they didn't like any of them. In the meantime, obviously, at this point, I had some privileged information about the position, the the package, the the the, the school, and the and the well, the country. I kind of knew. Um, and then, uh, over one over one weekend, and I consulted different people. Um. And it was funny, the feedback that I got from dear people that I love, okay? Um, and, and I said, I'm not happy here. And these opportunities do not come twice in mm -hmm. your life. I mean, I mean, how, how is it come that they contact me to do this? And I, I knew that I could do the job. Mm -hmm. And then I wasn't happy in Chile. Uh, and let me let me tell you, I contacted some people. Uh, one, a dear friend of mine, in who used to to live here in Curacao, he lives in Switzerland in in Zurich, and he says, "Accept the job now." Oh, okay. On the other hand, on the uh -huh. other hand, I I called another friend of mine uh -huh. who lives here in Curacao. And she says to me, are you crazy? 
Don't so, do it. Don't do it. Like. Oh my God! But that's like two pearls. Of- she's listening to me now, by the way. <laughs> Ooh, well, I know who that so, is, then. Okay, so then. But I understood each. I I understood each one of them. Uh, I understand. I understood their their perspectives, and why, you know, Margie was so saying, "Are you us. crazy? Yeah. Like, what are you gonna go there? That's like going backwards on your career." Yeah. And and then my friend from from Switzerland, I also understood what he meant. Mm-hmm. And at the end, as I've always done, you know, I follow my heart, you know? Yeah. For me, doing doing the job that I do is so important. I cannot imagine being unhappy doing my job. Okay. And I was not happy in Chile. So nothing, did, did nothing in Santiago, do you regret Santiago first? No, no regrets. Never regrets. I never regret. Because would Santiago have, would, would where you are now, would that have happened? You know, I, I, I'm so conscious of the decision. If I, I, I had no attachments with, with Santiago or the school. Mm-hmm. If I would have stayed in Bolivia with a contract, with attachments to the community, to yeah. the board, and suddenly, the school in Caracas offers me the job to go, I would have said no. So you needed something. I said no because I'm committed to Bolivia and my school, and this is it, and I won't go anywhere. So even that favored me, the fact that I was in in, in a country where I had no uh, ties, I had no commitment to bonds to, 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 to the company, the school. So I felt fine um, not honoring the country, the, the, the contract and, and leaving within six months, okay. obviously with, with notice, but, but, but so I didn't. Have, so you have that favoring you. Then you have these two polar, polar advices. Mm-hmm. I kind of knew their perspectives and I wanted to trouble myself listening to their, their options. Because obviously, after 23 years without living in Venezuela, I left a completely different country than the one that I found. Yeah, of at course, least. because by no, now, it's... politically at least, it was different. Yes, for sure, politically, you know, and fine, and economically as well. Um, but again, no, I, I knew, I knew um, Margie's perceptions. I knew Pedro's perception from 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 Zurich. And, um, but at the end, I said, you know, I, I need to follow my heart and I don't feel well here. Here, I, I didn't, I didn't feel that, I, that my job was making any difference in, in, in Chile. Um, so I said, okay, au revoir, ciao. Okay. And I left. I got to ask you this, maybe because I need an answer myself. I find it very hard to understand what that means. Follow your heart. Um, Think with me here. How do I describe this? My listeners are online. How do you describe listening to your heart? Because we found ourselves also in that situation. You have this opportunity in front of you. You're unhappy. You will always take advice from your friends. Even though you, like you said, you kind of know what they're going to tell you. But at the end, you got to make the decision. So you say, you know, your heart. what is that? I, I, I guess for me, follow follow my heart, or or was the the decision between between the the rational and irrational? I want the more. Ra- you know, I think that's it, basically. So the 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 ra- the, the rational thing would have been. Stay here. This is a safe country with a stable economy. You have a, a secure job versus you are going to a, a country where there is a dictatorship, where you left 23 years ago for different reasons, where uh, there is no freedom of, of speech, which all of those things are partially, you know, right. Mm-hmm. But at the end, m- I put some. I put more weight uh, 
in in the fact that I didn't feel part of the community. I didn't feel that I belonged there. I didn't like the the, the school, the environment, and 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 for me, that was more important than the rational things. Okay, and and I, and I'm not romantic in the sense of oh, I'm going to get reconnected with my family, the one that I left 23 years ago, because I'm not. I mean, my parents were very. Uh, they 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 raised us very independently. I left Venezuela when I was 16 years old. We were very independent. My brother and I were very independent in our own decisions and 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 way of living. So, I I it's it's not that I had a, a romantic affair with the fact of going to back to my 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 roots my mm -hmm. where that i was born sense. it makes sense to me because even i now when i've detached you live so many places after a while home no longer is a romantic idea i feel at least i'm not sure if you agree with me on that and and kirti one of the things that i discovered you know now that i'm doing the job Mm -hmm. I always connected with the communities. In the case of Curacao, well, it was a, this is home to me. I learned the language. I connected with the people. I this these kids um, that now are, are adults and, and grown ups are part of my life. Um, same thing in Bolivia. Less time, but mm -hmm. more or less the same commitment. Um, and um and then going back to venezuela um it's it's a different thing for me it's uh, i i do the same job but i guess i'm leaving maybe i don't know i'm not i don't want to say a legacy but i but doing it in my own country um has a different um satisfaction let's say you know it's 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 like i'm paying back to my community where mm -hmm. I where I grew up and you know as a child and teenager. It's almost like you've taken all the years that you've taken something Experience from Venezuela, something and, and, from and, Santiago, and, something from Bolivia, and then you're just bringing it all back into the country. Yes. Because obviously if I wouldn't have had that journey, I would have never been attractive to to them as a as as decision makers to bring me back to you know what I'm saying like yeah. the fact that I had all these experiences in international schools and my education um, was I'm sure was the reason to to bring me back uh, with the benefit of of even though I was not there for such a long time yeah I had a clear um, a framework of the culture and the the environment in which I was going to work. Yeah. So what does it then mean now? I mean, you're in a way it's it's like you're going you've returned back and I asked you earlier is this it? And then you said no. So it, it makes me ask you what does it mean do you consider yourself Venezuelan or is that a question? Is that a conversation in itself? That that is a conversation in itself because, um, um, I mean, it's it's interesting. As I was, my dad, as I told you, was from Spain. So uh, when I grew up, I was I was always seen, or my family was seen as the as the Españolitos, the 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 foreigners, the Spaniards. You know, really? yeah, because in Venezuela, yeah, yeah, oh. because because um, I don't know the the you know the food that we ate was different. Like in my house, we never ate arepas. You know that was that wasn't part of the meal. You know, because it, my dad kind of you know um, he he brought a lot of the spanish culture and 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 gastronomy to 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 home and so i i was always seen as as the 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 child the child of the spanish guy you know 
Okay. Um, but after all the, you know, I lived in, in the States when I was 16 years old. And then, you know, it, it got to a point that I lived more years abroad than in Venezuela. So that made me very, very, I don't know, uh, international maybe. Mm-hmm. I, but, I get what you feel, but describing it is know, very hard. It's it's hard. Like, uh, I feel at home when I'm here in Curacao, but I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not from here. You know, like, could I live here? Yes. Would I adapt easily? Yes. But same would happen as it has happened in Venezuela. Like, st- Venezuela is still seen uh, as, a, as a challenging country. Did, it, did I adapt well? Yes. Uh, am I enjoying it? Yes. No regrets? No regrets. Um, have I learned? Oh, yes, I've learned a lot. Have I recognized the reasons why I left and they are still the same reasons why I would leave now? Yes. Really? Yes. I, I think it, I, I always was like an outcast in, in, in within the Venezuelan context. I feel you know, like that's in Curacao. I, in Curacao, I felt more at home because I, 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 I felt, first, people didn't know about my history. They had no background, you know? Yeah. They, they didn't have any pre-knowledge information about me. I made my own uh, persona here. In Curacao. Um, in I Curacao, think- yes. In Venezuela, you always had a history. People knew who you are, the family that you came from, the school that you went to. You know, they had information that they can figure it out and, and create a, a perception, their own perception, whether it was right or wrong. Um, so Curacao gave me the opportunity perhaps to be uh, more authentic. Um, I had no judgment whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Um, it also made you know allowed me the the opportunity to be to think outside the box when thinking outside the box when you are in your twenties in your own country might be perceived that you're kind of weird you know um here I didn't have that um I was able to be more in a way progressive uh liberal you know that you know. In your own country, judged by your own people, perhaps in a in a in a closed society, perhaps you didn't have those opportunities. And those things that I'm telling you now, that mm-hmm. happened, you know, back then, twenty something years ago, almost thirty years ago, are the same reasons why I would leave the country now because they're still the same. The only difference is that I'm not the same. <laughs> I'm older, wiser, and I can care less nowadays. Mm-hmm. I will continue being authentic, progressive, thinking outside the box, and I don't care what people say. It's interesting that you say that about Venezuela because exactly how you describe it, and you felt your comforts in Curacao, I feel the same way about Curacao. Like, I know if I go back, I'd have the same reasons why I left. And I left yeah. Curacao, this was... I left Curacao twice, my first time in my teens and then my second time when I'm in my 40s. But I think it has to do with, with um, the, the, where you raise the community in which you grew up, um, the, the way the members of the community perceive your family and you mm-hmm. as an individual. And there is a lot of baggage there. Yeah. And that's why I, I now it was such a light bulb moment for me when you said in Venezuela, you have your history in Curacao, you didn't have your history. So you could make whoever you want to. And it makes sense for me now, because if I go to Curacao, I'd go because I have history. And like you said, there's baggage and everything. So you are always going back to that definition and you'll struggle within that. But then when I'm you're outside, it's like, <gasps> I can be who I want to be. Yeah. You know, I, I think uh, for us nomads, you know, every mm-hmm. time that, that we move to, to another country, 
we have the the opportunity to reset and mm-hmm. and obviously there will be like a a string that will keep us together and mm-hmm. and, and which symbolizes the the core of who we are but there could be variations of 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 who we are yeah let let me give you an example i think the essence is the same of me uh, as a person as a professional same values same core but in when i moved to uh from curacao to bolivia i mean look at this it's a from a from a caribbean island full of colors and and a diversity yeah. to a to a landlocked country no ocean around in the in the andes very traditional indigenous people were the majority obviously cult- culturally speaking completely different people in curacao are more open in the mountains very very close yeah and i had to become more formal no, in not only in my job but in my relationships because people in in the south of south america in the andes are more formal yeah. so i guess you know you know i study sociology and and i think that has helped me a lot to, in in moving and understanding in in uh, understanding cultures and understanding people and and how we should behave depending on the con- on the context um, did you ever feel stressed out that you had to never change? okay never because some never. people feel that you know i you know that. yeah i know for for I me mean, when i when i talk about my experience some people said you're crazy i will never do that i will never move from one country to another country to another country and i now that i'm 50 i have to say that <clears throat> i i i I still have the travel warm and I want to keep doing it but not with the same enthusiasm that I did it when when I was in my 20s, you know. Preach, I get you. <laughs> I have the same thing. I'm like I have the travel bug but I, there's in a way and I find it hard. I don't know if you've had that, but I never feel like I'm ever going to have what is home, traditional home. So yes. whenever people ask me, well, "Where's home?" I find that such a difficult question to answer. I don't know if you've experienced that as well. Yeah. Well, I always say that home is where your heart is. Yeah. It sounds cheesy, but it's true. I, I, a hundred percent. I, I feel that, I don't know if you also experienced that, is you make your home. That's where the heart that, is, that right? Too. You make that your too. home because you've lived so many places that you've taken, I've taken at least something of every place and said, this is, this is what I want. This is what I want. So yeah. Venezuela, Venezuela is still not it for you. Um, I, you I think know? Venezuela came back at the right time for me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to be making a difference in, in, in the lives of, of the children that I, that I, care for and that I teach and in the families. Um, you know, when I was hired in, in Bolivia to do the work in 2016, I was hired basically to, to fix the house and I left the house in, in very good conditions with a nice reaccredited school and with more students and, and in a better position than, than what I found the school. And I hope that when I leave Caracas, uh, I'll go through the same process and, and results. And, and I'm in the middle of that. I'm fixing the house. Um, in three years, I doubled student enrollment together with my team. Uh, so when I, we, we, we now have double of what I got three years ago in terms of okay. students. And of course, the faculty has grown too. Um, and, and it's been a, a, definitely a teamwork. Um, um, and I hope that when I leave, then I, I think I will leave the school in the, in, in a better condition than, than one, than 
than when I got it in, in 2021. So now that we've discussed all that, your life and all the things that you've learned along the way, if you had one message for anybody out there, when you look back on your life, what is the one thing you wish you knew that somebody had told you? Something I wish I knew. Yeah. Mm. That, would, that would have supported you along the way. That can support someone else along their way. You know, I think one of the things I, I, I would have liked to know, bef- you know, during the journey it, it, is the power of believing in, in myself. Like at times I, I doubted that I was going to be able to reach certain goals, maybe uncertainties, but you know, or on, or insecurities. It, but, and I'm not, I'm, I don't consider myself insecure at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but modest. I would say, you know, I would say, I, I, I would see myself perhaps, well, you're good, but you're not good enough, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and, and that could have been, um, interpreted as, as, as lack of, lack of trust or, on myself or, or, you know, lack of security. Okay. So now when I look back and I see my, my journey and, 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 you know, everything I've done personally and professionally, I said, well, yes, I was able to make it. I, I did it, you know, I, and I'm, and for me, success is, is not, is not securing a, a good job. For me, success is, first of all, feeling happy, um, you know, doing what I love to be doing. Um, and making an impact on on people's life and and through education, I think that that you can do a lot of that. Um, you definitely do. Well, I'm going to leave that with the audience for today because I really like today's conversation. Two things that stood out: understand what follow your heart is, and your definition of trailblazing, and how the hard moments were just as necessary. So to get to where you are. Yeah. I think, um, you know, explaining feelings like following your heart are, are hard things to do because at the end they're very uh, subjective, you know. Uh, but I think if, if we deep dive into into the idea, I think we all can understand what following your heart is after this conversation. I'm going to leave it with that. So Gustavo, thank you for coming. Thank you for being on. Thank you. It's always great to reconnect, uh, you know, many years of friendship and, and, and uh, yoga and, uh, you know, so many, so many stories to tell. There is, there is. I hope you enjoyed this week's conversation with Gustavo. It definitely had me thinking about my big decision I have to make at the moment. If you didn't know already, we do have a newsletter out where I do share my top tips on how you would follow your heart. Also, I would really appreciate it if you leave a review behind. It helps grow the audience and I'm fairly, I'm getting comfortable now sitting behind the mic. Thank you for your support. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Till the next one.